So first we'll talk about maximal oxygen consumption or VO2 max. So the maximum amount of oxygen your body can consume. And it's considered the gold standard for cardiovascular fitness. So the reason it is, is it takes into account all these different elements. So ventilation, moving air in and out of your lungs, uh, diffusion, getting oxygen into your blood, saturation, cardiac output. So how much blood is moving around your body, the blood flow down to the tissues, and then your tissues extracting that oxygen um, to use to power your metabolism. And VO2 is proportional to work. So the higher your VO2 max, the more physical work you can do. So in order to optimize your VO2 max, you need to optimize all of these different components. So here is a figure looking at endurance trained women and sedentary women across the lifespan. So this is a cross-sectional study. And over here you have VO2 max on this axis and then age down here. And so the first thing you probably notice is that the curves decline over time. So VO2 max falls over time. And if you watched your homework videos, you'd know exactly why that is. Um, but so age is an important component with VO2 max. But you also see that there's a lot of variability here at every age. So this 70 year old here has a VO2 max that, that's higher than this 25 year old here, right? So there's a lot of variability. You may also notice that this line drops a little bit faster. So the endurance train line drops faster than the sedentary line. So there's a convergence of those lines. And so what's happening up here is that you're not only getting the physiologic changes, but you're also getting a fall in the ability to train as hard. So for those of us who are getting older, you know that it's just harder to put in the hours, that the injuries last longer, um, you need more recovery time. And so training volume and intensity can go down. And so there's a little bit of detraining added into the physiologic changes here. So who will notice the fall first? Well, this group up here is exercising regularly and they're noticing that they are not, they can't do as much as they used to, right? So they're noticing that their physiology is changing. And they're pretty bummed about it, I have to say. <laughs> but down here, uh, these people are just sort of going about their daily lives, not realizing that their capacity is actually falling. And that's significant because there's this threshold of disability. And below that, it's very hard for people to take care of themselves, to carry their groceries, to go upstairs. And so there's a loss of independence that happens down here. And you can see that in the sedentary group, that happens to a number of people in their 60s, but none of the endurance trained people have crossed over that threshold of disability. So even there, there is a fall in aerobic capacity, it still remains above that threshold of disability when they're training throughout their life. And that is where you want to ultimately end up. And it's not just function, it's also all cause mortality or health. So death from any cause. And here's one of many studies that shows this relationship between exercise capacity and all cause mortality. So this was done at the Palo Alto VA here with um, over 6,000 vets and they measured the capacity of the vets on the treadmill, and they divided them up into quintiles of exercise capacity. So up here is the fittest group, and down here is the least fit group. And you have normal subjects and subjects that already have cardiovascular disease. And so this is relative risk of death over here um, compared to the most fit group. And you can see that there's sort of this exponential curve going down so that by the time you get to the least fit group, oops, least fit group, they are four to four and a half times more likely to die of any cause in the seven year follow up than the group that was most fit. So there's this well established relationship between fitness and all cause mortality. You see a similar relationship with muscle strength as you do with cardiovascular fitness. And that is, if you do not do any resistance training, you are less strong to begin with, and you fall more rapidly, and you end up at this critical range. If you train regularly throughout your life, you will start stronger, and in this case, the fall is less steep, and you end up um, having a great deal of functional capacity in your later years. And this is just sort of a summary of literature data. It's not from one particular, particular study. It's representative. <clears throat> 